Do you know that there are soldiers from 46 Commonwealth countries serving in the British Army, among them more than 60 Kenyans? They are deployed around the world, including here in Kenya, where the British Army has a permanent base in the north of the country. Well, this base serves as a training point for freshly commissioned troops to be acclimatized and readied for war. For some, it seems strange to have a former colonial power having such a significant presence in its former colony. But for others, it's a chance to train together against other formidable enemies in the region. Our very own Jeff Koinange traveled up north and spent some time with both British and Kenyan troops and brings us this week's feature, Friends in Force. <laughs> As they train, we train, so we benefit. In the military, you have to be a people person. You know, the military isn't for everybody, regardless of what gender you are. The starting point of our journey is the backdrop of the spectacular, imposing peak of Mount Kenya. In the bustling town of Nanyuki, some 200 kilometers north of Nairobi, and right on the invisible line known as the equator. But what's not invisible here is the heavy presence of the British Armed Forces. This is Nyati Barracks, 240 acres of brick and mortar, inaugurated earlier this year by Defence Cabinet Secretary Dr. Monica Juma and home to the British Army Training Unit in Kenya, or BATUK, as goes its acronym. This is the largest foreign troops base in Kenya. Here at Nyati, there can be as many as 1,500 British soldiers at any one time, deployed to be trained and readied for the next big war. The British military presence in Kenya dates back to 1963, the year of independence and before. And the relationship with Kenyan troops is more a symbiotic relationship than just boots on the ground. They then had this whole area they have to travel. Our guide throughout this tour of duty is Major Sophie Piper, an eight-year veteran of the British Army Engineering Corps <laughs> and who has a special connection to Kenya, having spent part of her early childhood here with her family. It's been great actually, so my first memories of kind of life or of Kenya, so it's always quite nice to come back to the place that your kind of foundation, your formative years were spent, so it's, it's, it's been amazing. We'll get back to Nyati Barracks later, but first we have to take a quick helicopter ride some 200 kilometers further north from Laikipia County, past Meru County, Isiolo County, and all the way past Archer's Post in Samburu County to a forward military base where joint operations are taking place between British troops and the Kenya Defense Forces. This is a vast land. From up here, you get to appreciate just what the soldiers far down below us are up against. It is not just the unforgiving land below, it is also where the enemy could possibly be hiding. The pilot, Timmy Flowers, decides to land the chopper on top of a flat piece of rock, the highest point above this desert plain. I'm standing at Al Kanjao, one of the highest peaks in the entire Samburu County. Below me, thousands and thousands of acres of land and the actual training ground for the joint military exercises between Batuk and the Kenya Defense Forces. Below me is where we're going to see real action between the two forces. By the way, said yesterday, it's the, it's Major Piper is only one of a handful of female officers here, and she is quick to appreciate the relationship between Batuk and the KDF. The importance of Batuk in Kenya, and in particular Nanuki, is, is paramount, really. Um, not only for kind of the economy and employment of local people, but actually it's hugely beneficial for um, soldiers as well to come over to Kenya and be given the privilege of being able to exercise and visit this country. 
Um, so it's, it's, it's a two-way relationship and it's, it's of the utmost importance, really. We land at Camp Tuiga, the forward operating base for the Joint Operations, a fully set up military base right in the middle of nowhere, completely protected and well shaded from the harsh Samburu sun. Colonel Paul Gilby is the man in charge of the entire Batok operation in Kenya. Around here, everyone simply knows him as Shove. Shove first arrived in Kenya back in 1988. 30 plus years and many tours in between later. He is back in Kenya and insists the country offers the perfect climatic conditions for preparing soldiers for the next big war. We want harsh environments because that is about training for the worst case scenario uh, and the elements are against us here as well as any enemy forces in the future. So that gives the focus of the training to make it hard and prepare the boys and girls to go away to fight for the good and benefit of their host nation. So you only have to look here and the environment is very similar to Somalia where we're standing together with you and we have to train together to achieve the effect for both of our countries. He also says the British Army and the Kenya Defence Forces have had a special relationship that includes joint regular military exercises between the two forces. Standing shoulder to shoulder, we've got to know each other's business and we've got to work together. Um, and it's just a deep pleasure. I mean, we, we, are, we are a host in this amazing country. You're our host in this amazing country. And we've just got to understand each other. If we can understand the very lowest level to the highest level, then we can work together and, and we can achieve success wherever that is. We leave the Colonel and his officers to prepare for the next day's simulated dawn raid. Dinner is quickly served. British and Kenyan troops breaking bread together as a spectacular sun sets in the distant background. For us, once dinner is over, we quickly look for a place to spend the night. There are few choices here in the middle of nowhere. One tent, six people, a simple cot, which we have to put together ourselves with a bit of help, and then a net to prevent mosquitoes and other night crawlers from disturbing our sleep. That's our accommodation for the night. Us and the hundreds of British and Kenyan troops spread across these plains. Dawn the next day and gunfire signals the start of a joint military operation. Actually, these soldiers have been walking across the desert for the last 12 hours straight. This is the culmination of that march. The gunfire grows more intense as the soldiers move in to secure a village, even as the imaginary enemy fights back. For the next 30 minutes or so, these highly trained troops put into practice what they've been learning. Make no mistake, this is as real as it gets. And that's perhaps the point of this entire joint operation between Batak forces and the KDF simulating a real war situation as it would be perhaps in Afghanistan or even Somalia. But this is Kenya's arid north and these operations are dangerous. They're in your face. They are real time but pretty well coordinated. Finally it's all over. The make-believe enemy has been defeated and the village has been secured. The exercise has been challenging, grueling but eventually rewarding. There's no break for these tried and tested troops. They quickly assess their losses and gains and then move out in single file to the next assignment. The Kenyan company of soldiers is led by Major Sylvester Otieno, who's been with the KDF for more than a dozen years now. He says his men have proven time and again that KDF is as good as any fighting force on earth. The best part is uh, the KDF gives you the training, initial training, give you other chances to train and give you opportunity to go and exercise what you've been trained for. And that is given by the enemy, especially in Somali. They go test what you are made of and we normally show them what we are made of, which is really fun. 
something that Colonel Shove Gilby completely agrees with. The badge here, you know, as you'll see straight away, that is the that is that all the colours of the Kenyan flag. So uh, and uh, you know on that badge, uh, which is the Batuk badge, and the the cross pangas is um, um, warrior brothers together. So that is a symbol of our partnership over many years that we are warrior brothers together, working together for better peace. But Batuk's presence here has not been without controversy. Just recently, one of its soldiers posted online a video of a fire he and his colleagues had allegedly started in one of the conservancies in Laikipia. The incident received universal condemnation, prompting even the British High Commissioner here to make a strongly worded statement. It was an accidental fire that was started uh, and the army has scrambled very, very quickly up there to dig trenches, fire breaks to try and contain the fire. And these things, you know, accidents, which we think it is, but as we say, we'll do a full investigation, do happen. So uh, it's not great and we're really sorry and we really wish it hadn't happened and we're doing everything we can to, uh, to mitigate those circumstances. Uh, so the way forward now is it will be a, an internal British military uh, investigation. We have something called the Royal Military Police, uh, whose job is to make sure that our, our troops behave well, and if they don't, uh, they will be uh, tried appropriately. Colonel Shove is quick to shove aside any negative talk about Batuk's future long-term stay here in Kenya. I hope, you know, I've worked with the Kenyan Defence Forces in, uh, in the Bosnian conflict in 92 uh, in Garaj, a totally different environment, and again, we, we hope to be here forever. Um, we hope that, that you know, we're guests of the nation and we hope to be working together. It's time to head back to Nanyuki, this time by road. Three and a half hours away, half of it dry, dusty, desolate. It is bumpy and hot and not for the faint hearted. And yet soldiers like Major Sophie Piper, who's driving us back, makes this trip every other week. The life of a Batuk soldier, or soldiers anywhere for that matter, is not rosy. Halfway to our destination, a welcome pit stop. A picturesque, quaint cafe located off the beaten path and just off the main highway and which serves as a welcome relief for many travelers along this well-traveled road. Back at Nyati Barracks, it is back to the usual routine for Major Piper and her team. There's still a lot of work to be done around here, making sure the base is well supported and ready to resupply the troops in the field with everything they need. Everything from heavy duty equipment to fresh boots on the ground. New arrivals like Corporal Sudan Uchai is originally from Nepal and a former member of the world famous fighting force known as the Gurkhas. Now, despite a rich fighting heritage, the corporal <laughs> says his family was anxious when he initially told them he was being deployed to Africa. They were worried, like when I said I'm going to Africa, and um, but I, I assured them like it's a really wonderful place. When I arrived, them like you not you do not need to be worried about here, especially like whenever I go out, everyone is like so friendly and talks to me like. I can tell like, when I go to uh, Nanuki town, everyone will be like coming to me, uh, like just everyone and talking to us is just brilliant. A few weeks in and he's already feeling at home. I just literally posted the picture of Mount Kenya uh, today saying that uh, it looks similar to Mount uh, uh, Fishtail back in where I'm from and it looks definitely similar. Okay. Honestly, yeah, okay. and I, I'm, I'm waiting for me to do the 80 to go down to Mount Kenya soon. So, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Is it real? Now, there are several hundred Kenyans employed here locally as support staff. Kenyans trained in everything from mechanics to engineering, making sure the heavy duty vehicles and equipment are ready to get back on the road. All this under the command of 28-year-old Captain Richard Oliver. This is my first choice, so when I, we, in the RIMI we have to go to an, uh, a light aid detachment board um, and we get to select where we'd like to go. Um, this is my first choice because I love Africa. I've been to Somalia before and I'm not sore and I love East Africa, so I chose this as my top choice. Many of these British soldiers and their families seem to fit in quite well with the life in Nanyuki. Sophie Meek is married to a Batuk officer. 
She comes to the Nanyuki market weekly to shop for everything from food to clothes. She never imagined she'd end up raising her daughter, Sienna, in Africa. The day that we found out was the day I found out I was pregnant, so it was all a bit, uh, bit chaotic, but it was, yeah, we were really excited. And it's been wonderful, we've been made to feel so welcome by everybody. Um, the Batak community is fantastic, and the locals just get on with everybody so well. So we've been, we've been really lucky. The locals here are only too happy. Batuk for them means business, and business means the injection of real cash into the local economy here, even in these difficult times of the COVID-19 pandemic. We want them to be here. Let them stay here. They are good. Yes. They bring our economy in Laikipia. And she is not the only one. Okay. These dresses, they belong to Batuk. This skirt belongs to Batuk. These big shirts here, they belong to Batuk. So they, they give me a lot of work. And I'm very happy, I'm glad. In fact, they improve the economy of this town. Yeah, so they are very important to us. Jumbo! Jumbo! Meanwhile, it's back to business as usual for Major Sophie Piper and her team. Plenty of CSR projects to oversee here in Nanyuki. Everything from building schools, complete with desks and chairs provided by Batuk, and digging toilets that are clean and safe. And weekends for the soldiers is spent in activities like this. A rugby tournament for young boys and girls sponsored by Batuk and run by Danish Okello Gem, a former professional rugby player whose vision is to keep these kids off the streets. When you're idle, you have a lot to think about. So the girls who would have been maybe married off early pregnancies, the boys will have been criminals, others don't go to school. But I use this rugby to keep their discipline, to keep them in check. I have to make sure you go to school. They're closing school next week. I want to see results for everybody. You don't have to be number one, you don't have to be bright, but you have to show me the commitment those in school and those out. And when they come home, they also have to show me that their parents are supporting them. They have to show that they come home in time and they do their household chores and they do their other duties. They do their, what is it called, their homework assignments, all that. So it's keeping them in check, which is a very good thing. And that's, that is the kind of kids we want in future. We want people who are all-rounders. Shared interests and a history of relationship between Kenya and Britain assures Batuk of a long-term presence in the north. We are a centre of training excellence. Um, we want to stay here for future and it's a joint future and everything I talk about here is a joint future. It's a future for the, the KDF, for the whole of the Kenyan government and the Kenyan population and also the UK. So it, it's a win-win for both of us and, and, what, and, and that is what we, we need to keep building on. Uh, you know, personally, you know, I love, love being here and uh, I have a rich history of, of being here for over many years and I want to pass that legacy on to other boys and girls throughout the future. Now these soldiers' grandparents probably fought each other during Kenya's War of Independence and now former enemies have become close allies whose joint mission is keeping the region safe from a different kind of enemy. Jeff Koinenge. Citizen Television, deep in Samburu County. As they train, we train, so we benefit. In the military, you have to be a people person. You know, the military isn't for everybody, regardless of what gender you are. 